The ice and rain protection system enables operation in icing conditions and heavy rain. For anti-icing, critical areas of the aircraft are protected by hot air or electrical heating. Hot air from the pneumatic system is provided for the anti-icing of the three outboard leading edge slats of each wing. Each engine air intake is anti-iced by an independent air bleed from the high pressure compressor. The air is supplied through the engine anti-ice valve. Note, in the event of an electrical power supply failure, this valve will automatically open. Electrical heating is provided for windshield anti-icing and cockpit side windows defogging. The angle of attack AOA probes. The total air temperature TAT probes the pitot probes, and the static ports. When the electrical system is powered, the wastewater drain masts are also electrically heated. Note, on the ground, the heat is reduced to prevent injury to ground personnel. There is an external visual ice indicator with an integrated light installed between the two windshields. All the ice and rain protection controls are located on the overhead panel. The crew manages wing and engine anti-ice valves through the anti-ice control panel and all of the electrical heating system by the probe window heat push button switch. Memos associated with anti-ice operation are presented on the engine warning display memo area. Electric wipers are provided for the windshields. They are operated at slow or fast speed through the wiper selector located on the wiper panels. The maximum speed with the wipers in use is 230 knots. With the engines running, the automatic function of the probe window heat system means that the probes and the cockpit side windows are heated, the windshield heating operates at low power, but the TAT probes are not heated on the ground. Note, you can also clear the windows manually prior to engine start by pushing the probe window heat switch to the on position. If you are in potential icing conditions, the engine anti-ice system must be selected on after each engine start. Select the engine one anti-ice. Notice that the amber fault light in the engine one anti-ice push button switch illuminates momentarily during the valve transit. Then the fault light disappears and the blue on light illuminates. As soon as one engine anti-ice push button switch is on, the engine anti-ice memo appears in green on the EWD. And the ignition memo appears in green, indicating that continuous ignition is automatically selected for the engines. The idle N1 is automatically increased to give better protection against flameout. N1 limit, amber tick, is automatically reduced because air from the engines is taken for anti-icing. Continue by selecting the engine 2 anti-ice. Both engine air intakes are now being anti-iced. Once airborne, as an added precaution, we will use wing anti-icing. The wing anti-ice push-button switch controls the wing anti-ice system on both wings simultaneously. Note, use of APU bleed is not authorized if wing anti-ice is in use. Please select wing anti-ice. The fault light in the wing anti-ice push-button switch illuminates amber momentarily during the valve transit. 
The fault light is replaced by the blue on light. And the wing anti-ice memo appears on the engine warning display. We have called the ECAM bleed page for you. Observe that the anti-ice white indications are displayed, meaning that the wing anti-ice push button switch has been set to on. And the green triangles are displayed, indicating that the wing anti-ice valves are open. This is a demonstration of an in-flight failure of the left windshield heating system. On the engine warning display, read the title of the failure. In this example, the blue line advises you to avoid icing conditions. Notice that no system page is called. Having noted the advice, and after review and confirmation from the pilot flying, clear anti-ice. The status page is now displayed and reminds you to avoid icing conditions. The inoperative system is the left windshield heating. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, Clear status. ECAM complete, screens normal. The probe heat is not operating. This could lead to ice buildup on the captain's pitot, causing incorrect speed information. Since ADR number three is available as a spare, the captain's air data source should be changed. The pilot flying will ask you to perform the ECAM actions. Perform ECAM action. By selecting Captain 3 on the air data selector, ADR 3 replaces ADR 1 to provide valid data to the captain's instruments. Note. Air data switching should not be selected to Captain 3 if ADR 3 is not available. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, clear anti-ice. On the EWD, the memo message switching panel is displayed to remind you that the captain's ADR has been switched. The status page is displayed. The inoperative system is the captain's pito heating. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, clear of status. ECAM complete, screens normal. The ECAM caution wing anti-ice system fault appears, meaning that at least one wing anti-ice valve has not opened after switching the system on. Notice the ECAM bleed page is called automatically. On the ECAM bleed page, there is no green arrow on the left side, meaning that the left wing anti-ice valve is not open. Also note that the fault light in the wing anti-ice push button switch remains eliminated. Perform the first ECAM action. Switch off the wing anti-ice. All wing anti-ice indications on the system page have disappeared, meaning that the system has been switched off. The ECAM advises you to avoid icing conditions. After review and confirmation, clear wing anti-ice. Pressing the clear button calls up the status page. Again, we see the message, avoid icing conditions. Under inoperative systems, wing anti-ice is listed. Note that the clear lights are still illuminated. After review and confirmation, clear status. ECAM complete, screens normal. You are in cruise, the anti-ice systems are operating, and you want to switch off the wing anti-ice system. Switch off the wing anti-ice system. Observe that on the EWD, the ECAM caution wing anti-ice left valve open appears, meaning that the valve is stuck open. 
On the ECAM bleed page, the amber arrow is displayed, indicating that the valve has remained open. On the anti-ice panel, the amber fault light illuminates because there is a disagreement between the selected and actual position of the valve. According to the indications, wing anti-icing can be selected on for both wings if required, but is continuously on on the left side. There is a thrust penalty shown by the message on the EWD. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, clear wing anti-ice. The message thrust limit penalty is also displayed on the status page. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, clear status. ECAM complete, screens normal. However, the fault remains. The effect of the fault is readily apparent upon landing. An automatic recall of the failure has occurred, but with a new procedure, because the aircraft is now on the ground. The ECAM action is to switch off engine one bleed. This prevents overheating the left wing by isolating the air supply from the wing anti-ice system. Perform ECAM action. The engine one bleed valve is closed, as shown by the white off light illuminated on the corresponding push button switch and the indications on the ECAM bleed page. As you will remember, the APU is on the left side of the pneumatic system. Therefore, the APU bleed cannot be used. No further action is required. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, clear wing anti ice. The status page is called, repeating the message you had on the engine warning display. The inoperative systems are Pack 1 and Engine 1 Bleed. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, clear status. ECAM complete, screens normal. 